G'day and welcome to Larrikin, Japan. Today it's a beautiful day here in rural Japan. Winter's nearly here. Yesterday was absolutely freezing, but today it's really nice. There's no wind, the sun's out. It's about 13 degrees at the moment, it's really nice. Anyway, today I thought we'd have a bit of a talk about some of these so-called experts you get on YouTube. Now, a lot of them, I wouldn't take their information with a grain of salt. So, a lot of this uh, is about coming to Japan, getting visas, getting jobs, buying an Akia house. It's all tied up into one big package. Now, you want to be very, very careful about this. So, now let's say, for instance, you live in Australia or America or wherever and you want to come to Japan and you need a job so probably the easiest job you can get in Japan if you're a native English speaker is teaching English so a lot of companies now they will advertise online and you can apply for these jobs overseas and then if you get the job the company you get the job through will sponsor you so you can get a work visa now most of these work visas are only for one year and then at the end of that year if you're still with the company they will renew your visa if not you have to find another job and get that company to sponsor your visa for another year you can get work visas longer than a year but these companies won't sponsor you for more than a year at a time because that's all the contract lasts for they only do one year contracts here for english teachers so you have to be really careful you know at the end of each year you have to either find a new job if they don't uh, renew your contract and then you have to get your visa all fixed up for the next year so some of these people are telling people oh okay you know come over get a job as an english teacher get a visa buy an Akia house you know you get your Akia house for 30 or 40 grand and that sort of thing and and you're laughing you know why would you buy an Akia house on a on a visa with only lasts a year what happens if you can't get another job and can't renew your visa can't get a new visa you got this house and you you're not allowed in Japan so you know it's just craziness now I saw a video last night this woman she bought an Akia house I don't know how much she paid for it she bought it sight unseen she bought it because she liked the gardens it had nice gardens it had photos of the garden so she liked the garden so she bought this house now this house is an absolute mess it's had it's got water leaks in it so it's got water damage through the house it's got mold under the wallpaper and this sort of stuff a lot of the wood is dry rot termites are either in the house termites white ants whatever you want to call them are, are in the house or they've been in the house and you know so it's got a lot of this sort of damage the floor was all uneven so all the foundations aren't done aren't right now this is a, some of the stuff you sort of buy now she never had a builder's inspection on it so if you're going to buy one of these Akia houses, if you're not a builder, pay the money, get a builder to come and inspect the house. I don't know what it would cost you to have a builder come and inspect the house. Maybe three, four hundred dollars. It's money well spent. You know, if the builder says, ah, oh, this house is rubbish, don't buy it. Well, you've only lost three or four hundred bucks. But, you know, if you, you know, you could lose your whole money if you've paid... 30 or 40 grand for this house and it's no good and you have to have it demolished then you have to pay for the demolishing on top now it's not cheap to have a house demolished in japan it costs you a lot of money i don't know what it costs it depends on the size of the house but you could be up for 20 or 30 grand to have the house demolished by the time they smash it down sort everything out take it away have stuff recycled stuff disposed of and everything it could cost you that i'm not real sure but it, it's not cheap to have a house demolished in japan it's quite expensive so you have to be really careful like this house was a mess all the floors are, and uh, have been you know 
uh, either white ants or termites have been into them. Termites, uh, white ants are a big problem in Japan. My house, I don't have to worry, it's steel frame. So I don't have to worry about that sort of thing. But that's why a lot of houses in Japan, they have vents in the concrete to let air flow through under the house because it's supposed to keep them at bay. You know, you don't sort of get that problem. So you have to be really careful. You know, if you are thinking of buying a house, don't go buy one sight unseen. That's just stupid, you know. And always, if you are going to buy one, um, make sure you have a builder inspect it before you. Don't listen to these so-called experts that tell you what to do and all this sort of stuff, you know. But first off, you need proper visas. So, like, if you're married to a Japanese, no problem. You get a spousal visa. You can buy a house, no problem. You know, but if you're just on a yearly visa, you're crazy buying a house. You know, because uh, let's say you did buy a house and it wasn't bad. You paid, you know, 30 or 40 grand. Then you spend another 30 or 40 grand to, to have it uh, renovated and fixed up. New bathroom, new kitchen, all that sort of stuff. You know, you're getting up around the 100 grand mark. Now, if you lose your contract and you have to try to sell it, you're not going to recoup that hundred grand. You're probably not going to get. You're probably going to get around the same money as you paid for it, because there's so many used houses on the market, second-hand houses on the market. So you have to be really careful on this. Now, let's say, for instance, you you did, and you're on a yearly contract. At the end of that year, the company decides they're not going to renew your contract. So okay, I'll find another job. So you find another job. But it's in another town or another city. You might have to, tra you know, it could be 40 or 50 kilometers away from your house. So every day you're traveling 40 or 50 kilometers each way to go to and from work. You know, it's all extra expense, time. You know, to go 50 kilometers in Japan in, in the morning could take you two hours going to and from work. So this is something you have to think about. So I, I think you're really crazy if. Uh, if you do listen to some of these people you know and some of these people have been in japan five minutes but they're experts on everything they know know all about the pension fund and all about health care and and uh and everything so you want to be really careful of what information you believe on, on this you know because some people are just out there just and they're charging you for all this information they're giving you and half of it's right, half of it's not, you know, so I, I'd be really careful on uh, on what information you you take in, you know. Like for me, if I was going to come to Japan, I'd go to the Japanese embassy in Australia and then have a talk with them and find out what you need and things like that. What visa you could get and how to get it and what paperwork you need. And they're going to tell you what you need. You know, they're going to help you out. Um, be very careful of some of these companies would do visas. Some of them a bit shonky. They're very shady. And, uh, yeah, you could end up getting messed up with these. So you want to be really careful of uh, some shady, shady companies who are do doing visa applications and all this sort of stuff. I think you're better off just doing it by yourself. Uh, if you are, uh, if you can work for yourself. Now Japan has special visas where um, entrepreneurs can get visas, special visas, and you can start up your own company here and, and do this. So they are trying to attract these sort of people to Japan. So depending on what you do, if you're a graphic designer or web designer and you can work from home, you're good you can do this sort of stuff in japan most places now have optic fiber so the internet's really fast it's very reliable you know uh most of it's all unlimited unlimited internet so you know you can download as much as you want it's no problem it's just one price and it's pretty reasonable so you want to be really careful of what you do because, yeah, some of these people, what they're telling people to do, it's just not right. But, you know, if you are going to buy somewhere, always get a builder to inspect it. Don't use a builder the real estate recommends. Find your own builder and uh, get
get it checked out. So you know you might think you, you, you're clued up on you can check the house out yourself but if you're not a builder you really don't know what to look for and uh, Japanese houses are a little bit different how they're built to western style houses so I think having a Japanese builder to go through and check it all out check all the structural make sure it's fine it hasn't got white ants or in it that sort of thing I think is a real big money it could save you a lot of money in the long run because you know if you yeah so you have to be really careful on some of these so-called experts and they're charging you money to do this sort of stuff you know have a cons do a consultant with them you know and yeah I don't know I think it's craziness so there are a lot of scammers on the net you just have to be really careful of what information you take yeah there's some people who know what they're talking about you know but there are also a lot who don't so just be very very careful if you are thinking of coming to Japan and what you do where you go you know like you know if you want to teach English in Japan if you lived in a, in a decent sized city and there are a lot of uh, kids and that sort of stuff you can teach a lot of you can do a lot of private lessons at home and you, you can make some extra money like that here in the country it used to be pretty good I used to make a lot on the on uh, after work I used to do a lot of English lessons now not so much the you know that there's not that many kids and it's just yeah it's not as easy to find students as it used to be but I think in cities I think you can but be very careful if you're doing work like that you're better off to pay taxes put it on your tax return and uh, you're safe you know if you don't you could get into trouble with the taxation if someone dobs you in you know ah oh, he's doing English lessons at home and that and they come around and check you up yeah you, you could be in trouble so you're better off just doing the right thing paying taxes that's what I've always done and always found it uh, to be no problem you don't pay a real lot but you're safe and everything you can claim so you're, you're better off so you just want to be really careful on uh, what information you um, take you know because some of it is not worth a grain of salt you know and you could get yourself into a lot of trouble you know do, waste a lot of money get yourself into a really big headache anyway that's it for today it's just a bit of a quick video on uh, you know just to be careful of uh, some of these people on the on on youtube and what they're telling you you know some of them carry on as if they know what they're talking about but they've only been here 12 months two years and, they, and, they're, and they're experts on the whole system you know so it's crazy they might have bought an Akia and now they're, they're an expert on buying Akias you know so you've got to be really really careful if you are going to spend money but visas are your main concern make sure you've got a proper visa before you go buying a house that is the number one tip I could give you anyway that's it for today if you've got any comments please leave them in the comments below i'd be interested to read anyway to next time that's all for now